Now, the technology year in review, and uh, my theme for this year is, wasn't the future wonderful? Uh, this is now the 144th year of the future of motion imaging. I think it was only last year that we were wondering about interactive TV and how we were going to do that. Um, streaming is going up, spending on digital media entertainment in the U.S. up a lot based on subscription streaming. Um, but cord cutting is not happening uh, anymore, or not at a rapid pace anyway. People are adding streaming, but they are also keeping the cord. The Super Bowl, I talk about every time. Um, the, uh, this year, the ratings were up a little bit. The viewership was up a little bit. Uh, so it's about 100 million. And uh, if you look at the streaming, it actually went down a little bit. So a total of about 102 million, including the streaming. So most people are watching the Super Bowl via their cords or their antennas, not via streaming. Um, here's a Wall Street Journal article, and it says, ah, TV really beat the pants off of streaming when it came to the Super Bowl. And the uh, commercials on the uh, Super Bowl were um, five, up to $5.6 million for 30 seconds. But if we look at the streaming, if there were 2 million streaming viewers roughly, uh, they had a high of $400,000 for 30 seconds. So the people who bought TV paid 5.6 cents a viewer, and the people who bought streaming paid 20 cents a viewer. So streaming maybe actually beat TV. The Oscars did not do as well as the Super Bowl. Their ratings were down uh, significantly. The audience was less than a quarter of the Super Bowl. And yet, they sold out their ads and got 2.6 million for a 30-second ad. Uh, so quarter of the audience, half the price of the ad. Um, they're doing pretty well, too. Um, how do we navigate a flood of streaming TV subscriptions? We thought cutting the cord was going to make it cheaper, and here's the New York Times saying, no, cutting the cord actually made it more expensive. But here's a way to get around paying the expense. Um, thousands of Disney Plus accounts were hacked uh, before uh, it had even been around for a week. Here is antenna use around the world, and U.S. and Canada, not a lot, 44 million, uh, but in other parts of the world there's more, and I added up all the numbers there, and it comes to 1.9 billion people watching TV via antenna. Uh, this is from Deloitte figures. Film refuses to die. The uh, studios have re-upped a deal with Kodak to make sure they will continue making motion picture film. Um, and cinema is not dying either. Here is European cinema. They had record-breaking attendance this year, uh, 1.34 billion uh, attendance tickets sold. And in the U.S., 2019 was the second highest box office ever. And it turns out that streaming doesn't really affect the box office that much. So maybe people are being affected by doing other things, by looking at their devices, but not uh, necessarily from streaming. This I showed last year, Tom Cruise complaining about motion smoothing. It's horrible and said it should be disabled. And so this year, the UHD Alliance came up with filmmaker mode, which turns it off, and everybody says, wow, great, uh, DGA, ASC, ICG all say this is a terrific way uh, to deliver stuff, except the home environment is not a grading suite. And so here is a story about uh, Dolby IQ, which is to deal with the home environment, and they're saying, oh, I don't know about this filmmaker mode, it's maybe not so great. Um, this is what happened when HDR got delivered to um, home TVs. Uh, what went wrong and how can we fix it? We, in this case, being the display industry. And there's the Dolby IQ showing, okay, if we take consideration of uh, what people's environment is, then maybe we have to uh, brighten things up a bit. And it's not just Dolby down at the bottom. You can see Samsung is dealing with that too. Uh, 5G, of course, is uh, saving the world. Uh, 
Uh, it has solved the climate crisis. Uh, it paid off the national debt. It rescued uh, kittens and puppies from a burning building. It's going to deliver Medicare for all, which, of course, is fake news. Uh, but here's real 5G news. This is an actual exhibit at CES. In case you were wondering, that is a 5G potato. And you can ask it questions, and it responds. And there's a uh, GoFundMe account, and they've been getting a lot of money for this. There's the story about it if you want to look it up. Uh, AT&T has now come up with real 5G, but it's only as fast as their fake 5G. <laughs> and here's the Wall Street Journal talking about 5G in Korea, where they have already gotten stuff out there, and it's not quite changing everything. And then if you um, are worried in the opposite direction, in addition to all of that, and the idea that Huawei can't provide stuff in the United States, um, except this morning, apparently, President Trump says, oh, no, Huawei is fine. Um, here's one that says, what you don't know about 5G may kill you. So Super Bowl 2020, the madness and magic behind the game's first 4K HDR broadcast. And as we saw on Monday, it wasn't actually 4K. <laughs> or it was 4K. <laughs> And thanks to Pete Putman for that term. I did not come up with it. He did. Um, but what they did was they upconverted HD. But why do you want to upconvert HD before you get to the consumer? So we have two problems. Here's Deborah Kaufman talking about how uh, consumers are running out of um, bits that they're paying for because of 4K. Uh, you're paying four times as, or you're getting four times as many bits. And that's not the only problem. Uh, Craig Codd pointed out to me yesterday, he was watching the Super Bowl uh, 4K HDR, and he loved the HDR, he loved the colors and everything, except he had to turn it off because it kept breaking up because he had insufficient bandwidth for the 4K. Uh, last year I told you about blue, and some people say blue keeps you up at night. Now they're saying, no, you need blue to go to sleep at night. Um, last year, we started talking about 9 by 16 instead of 16 by 9 for advertising and things like that. Well, now it turns out that the football league in Germany is doing 9 by 16 broadcasts. Uh, Gemini Man came out, and um, it was uh, both high frame rate and de-aging. Uh, I like that de-aging makes you look younger, but it doesn't make you act younger. So you still have a 60-year-old body that's supposedly running like a 20-year-old or something. Um, this is something we've known about for a long time, that strobing can uh, cause an epileptic fit. But this is the first time I know of that it was actually targeted. It was intended to cause harm to somebody. Um, so uh, we'll be hearing about that later. Um, Google went offline in Eastern Europe and the Middle East after cables got cut. And yes, Google was not stupid. They did have a second path, but it turns out that the second path got cut also. So resiliency is an issue. Uh, security is also an issue when Jeff Bezos' phone gets hacked. Uh, by the way, uh, his name is not a plural, so it should be Bezos's with an S after the apostrophe. And here is a new camera that came out, um, world's smallest image sensor. The entire camera module, including the lens, is 0 0.65 millimeters by 0 0.65 millimeters. And this is for endoscopy. It turns out that there's lots of infection going around uh, in endoscopy. Um, and so this is a disposable one. Everyone gets their own camera. Um, and long-term storage on glass. This was a big announcement from Microsoft that they put all of Superman on this piece of glass, 75.6 gigabytes, and it's just 7.5 by 7.5 centimeters. Uh, this is something that I told you about in 2002. 
um, Optware was putting um, a terabyte on a glass optical disc and uh, that was 12 centimeters. So we've gone from 12 centimeters down to 7.5 over the course of 18 years. <laughs> and now I will take questions. Wendy has a question. What's the, what's the resolution of the little microscope? Uh, 200 by 200. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>